that won the Premier World Championship this year in the hands of Eddie Lawson and the only bike and rider combination that finished in front of Australia's own Wayne Gardner on the Rothmans Honda. So now they wheel out Craig Trinder for Gold Coast Suzuki. The man who broke his back here in 1981 spent a year in hospital concussed at Adelaide International Raceway a little bit before that. 24 years old, his brother Steve badly knocked about two in a few race crashes and is racing in Canada and Craig quite likely to go over and join him there next year. He was a bit noticed during that international series as we have a beautiful view of the aerial of the Surfers Paradise track, the little speedway down the end, the pit area, the busy area in the foreground, the sort of oblong area there, the spectator area and the Narang River. And way over on the coast you can see some of the high-rise buildings. The airstrip, the planes lined up there. Always been a glamour circuit, lovely conditions here and one of the racetracks that's angling for an Australian round of the World Championships in 1987. And in a moment there'll be plenty of thunder and noise coming back to the start finish line to form up for this 12 lap heat lap record 112.6 interesting to Malcolm Campbell interesting to look at the times done in that first heat fastest laps Rob McElnay a 13.3 a tenth outside his best qualifying McGee half a second slower Osborne 1.3 slower than McGee a 15.1 Hamish McNichol early doing a 116.0 but then fading to 17s and 18s as the tyres went off on his heavy and very powerful machine. David and Dawson incidentally 13.8 on that machine here last year. David Horton a 17 on the RGB Suzuki on his last lap. He was one of the few that got quicker later on. Buckmaster got down to a 17.1 also late in the race. So Horton and Buckmaster the potential to get together and really Buckmaster's Honda should be the better of those two, the 1981 Suzuki. Then Craig Trinder on the Superbike, 17.6. And um, Buckmaster said that uh, he got a bad start and was then sort of more or less forced off the road in the opening lap. So um, he thinks that he's going to do an awful lot better in, in the second race. Well, he's got to do the hopes. times as well as get a start. And 17 was his fastest and 17-1. Uh, so he's got a fair deal of improving to do. That's a two years younger model than the model that holds the lap record at 12.6, written by a Tasmanian, Malcolm Campbell. Wayne Gardner has won this series three times previously. The other people who won it are Malcolm Campbell, David Hiscock, Graham Crosby, both of those New Zealanders, Greg Pretty, the South Australian, Geoffrey Sale. As we look at the grid positions, Rob McElnay and Kevin McGee, as you'll remember, sharing the fastest practice laps. Donny Osmond improving seven tenths of a second in, in today's earlier race. Michael Dowson uh, not getting down to the times he'd hoped, nor even his qualifying time. He'd hoped for a 15, and he's been in actually 17s. Hamish McNichol did a 16-0, so he improved on his time. Buckmaster a 17 yesterday, 17-1 earlier today. Horton, 17-5 down to a 17 in the race. Tony Armstrong, Craig Trinder, a great improvement from him, and he's had a lot of trouble over the weekend, down to a 17-6, a second and a half off it. And Brad Haywood crash on the third lap in the first heat. And uh, Hayward said he did quite a lot of damage to his VF750 and thought it was unlikely, although he was unhurt, that he would be able to get the bike ready for the second leg. And I think the start here is going to be crucial, very crucial to uh, McGee's race plan. It was noticeable that both he and McElnay were really a little bit slow off the line in the first leg, losing out definitely to the four-stroke superbikes and to uh, McNichol on the 750 Yamaha. And McGee really has to got to get off the line and into a rapid pace early on if he's going to hold on to McElnay. He said it's only the second time he's ridden on these um, Michelin radials and he wasn't too confident just how quickly he could go on the opening lap. And perhaps he says he took it a little bit too easy, but he said it was better to uh, stay uh, right side up than take a chance on the first race. Bikes now start to come up and down the main straight to line up at the start. 
the final 12 laps of Surface Paradise International Raceway. It's interesting that there's a tie to be beaten in this year's Swan Insurance Motorcycle Series. Two strokes have won the series four times. Four strokes have won the series four times. And I don't think there's any doubt that two strokes are going to take the lead when the series comes to a conclusion at uh, Calder International in Victoria in two weeks' time. The thing is with these uh, current racing slicks, it, especially on a very, very warm day like today and after a decent warm-up lap with a very short break in between, it's virtually possible to go flat out right from, from the start. 05 on the Highway Patrol bike is David Snape. He's been doing Speedway in the last six months. 82 is Tony Armstrong, all in readiness, hands of the starter. start from Donny Osborne on bike three as he wheel stands away and he takes the lead top start from Osborne he doesn't really look very different to Malcolm Campbell does he in the way that he settles on the bike and goes under the bridge there 61 Wayne Clark's nicely positioned also with McElnay running around the outside of him and it's all going wrong for McGee because he's about five places behind McElnay who now takes over third place you can see the bright orange Yamaha just flash into second place. McGee did a, did a couple of practice starts this morning and, in fact, burnt the clutch just a little bit. Warren Willing had it out and was just tidying it up a touch. Just look at the way he's hauling in Osborne. He's offline, though, there. Osborne was at the apex. Then McElday gets into it. And McGee... Osborne across him, though. And McGee's up into fourth place already. Third place just in front of him, Hamish McNichol. There's David Snape. Snape's about 30 years old and is the C-grade lap record holder here at about a 17.6. McElnay now will fire the gun. Isn't the noise just something superb? Wayne Clark still well positioned and Donny Osborne is hanging on grimly to Rob McElnay. Oh boy, he's got his bike working hard. Doing a grand job leading McGee. Who's got his bike kicking and bucking and weaving all over the place. And I think making him a little bit uncomfortable. It's very much a case of rider confidence on the machine and being able to understand just what you want to set up on the bike. Certainly McElnay has his bike all together, whereas McGee's just been flat out trying to learn how to ride the thing, let alone fine tune it this weekend. Donny Osborne's been very sensible on the Honda, but McElnay is now trying to find a way around. He's saying we're not worried about a factory engine, uh, McGee at least. We're not worried about a factory engine. We're just worried about me settling into the bike. We don't alter it or anything. And he tucks in hard there on McGee. But no way can he stay with the power and the acceleration. 140 odd horsepower on the Yamaha. And it's a 13.09 for Rob McElnay. 157.7 kilometers an hour on his first flying lap. And there's 2.53 seconds between Rob McElnay and Kevin McGee. So that is the fastest lap time done today. Incredible piece of uh, footage there as we saw McGee with the rear tyre right off the road coming under the brakes. He stood on the brakes so hard that there was daylight at least three inches showing on the brakes coming into the corner there. Then he got the power on and the thing went virtually sideways coming out of the turn. McElnay in the lead, two and a half seconds behind as the young charger from Victoria, Kevin McGee, And let's have a look at Kevin McGee's incident on the back straight as he came down braking hard. Peter Clifford. Yes, he's got the brakes on hard here, the thing's braking, and there it comes right off the deck there, two inches off the deck, and it starts to go out of line as he begins to tip it into the corner. Incredible just to see how good these twin Brembos are on the front of the works Yamaha. Down the main straight, Rob McElnay. Behind him, Kevin McGee. Is McGee closing? No, he's not. He's lost half a second on that lap, out to 3.03 seconds. One has to deduce from that that at least Kevin McGee is exploring the braking potential that he said earlier he wasn't using fully. 
Well, I wonder, because actually he was doing all the braking in a straight line. What McGee is talking about is the way that when you get really good and really confident on the bike, you can hang on with the brakes going right deep into the corner. At the moment, he's obviously not quite confident enough, and he's doing his braking in a straight line, and it was a last-minute desperate bit of braking before he wanted to tip it into the turn. Look at Rob McElday using every centimetre of the racetrack here in on the apexes as he comes out into the first part of the S's. And really, although they make it look smooth, he is working so hard to haul that bike around, sit it up, pull it over down to the right-hand side. Particularly in those quick successive left and rights, up onto the curbing there, very close to it, then onto the main straight. And a delightful display by Rob McElmay, a 13.29 compared with a 13.31 on the previous lap and a 13.09 the lap before. 4.33 seconds now separates Rob McElmay from Kevin McGee. Behind them comes Donny Osborne on the Honda V3. And behind them Michael Dowson then Wayne Clark on the Wollongong Edit Suzuki GSXR 750, sorry, 998, 1000 cc, Superbike. And from the looks of it, Hamish McNichol on the Yamaha TZ 750 is dropping right back. He had been in fourth position, but he's disappeared from the lap charts, and I'd say he stalled somewhere out there on the track. It would be a pity for John Broadhead, the current owner of that bike, who's a naval officer away on manoeuvres at the moment, but will be next week at Oran Park. Just an enthusiast, heard it was for sale, bought it literally to put on the mantelpiece, and then uh, got a bit of a recommendation on McNichol and decided to race it. There's Hamish McNichol pushing the bike back. What a shame to see the dear old thing doing that. Well, they, of course, the TZ750 that won this series for Jeffrey Sale is racing here today. Not that one. Oh, in fact, the Hamish McNichol bike is the ex-Michael Dowson machine that raced here last year. Whoa! There's McGee in strife, Peter Clifford. Yes, it's uh, at the back end slides and then uh, the suspension doesn't seem to compensate quite correctly as it comes back into line and it sets up an almost road bike weave. In fact, uh, Kel Carruthers did uh, put another notch on the re rebound damping uh, after they did it in the first leg, but uh, I would suggest either there's a, another problem or he needs uh, yet another notch. It's very difficult for a guy like McGee, used to riding super bikes and production bikes, which do that sort of thing all the time, uh, he just thinks it's quite natural uh, and now he's gone on a Grand Prix bike which really should be better than that and he's got to try and learn how to sort the motorcycle out to explore all the possibilities of the suspension tuning which he's never had before. And up around 300 kilometres an hour. McGee about five odd seconds behind McElnay knocking it back for the run under the bridge. And, and again, the back wheel kicks up in the air. And we'll see if he has the same rear wheel walk. Yes, not quite as dramatic as it was before, perhaps being a little easier on the throttle. Peter Clifford, you look at the back wheel there, just skimming the deck. You've seen a lot of people start off on Grand Prix bikes, and you must be impressed, surely, with the way Kevin McGee's handling this task, getting stuck right into it. Yes, he is. He's doing a very, very good job. Uh, I'm sure the only difference between what he's doing and what Rob's doing out the front is a little bit of experience. And uh, we're now swap back to uh, McGee's teammate Dowson on the production bike, now fitted with the slick tyres. He's in fourth place at the moment. Not only wearing out the rear tyre, but he's right knee at this moment. He's ahead of Wayne Clark. You can see there, just looming in the background, so Clark on the 1,000cc superbike, not that far in the rears. What Yamaha have done with this big 1,000 is, it's, it's a big motorcycle, as any 1,000 is, but the uh, steering geometry really is quite quick on it. Not an awful lot of uh, trail by 
by the look of it and the feel of it because it really does steer quite quickly. Behind Clark comes Simon Buckmaster, who's well clear of a dice for sixth place, being led at the moment by David Horton on the Suzuki RGB 500. Donny Ogden, of course, well settled in to third place on number three. So there's some local riders putting in some grand performances here on, in the case of Donny Osborne, an older bike, in the case of uh, Dowson, a brand new bike, and in the case of Rob McElnay, about the fastest bike in the world. And as we uh, watch Rob come onto the main straight, you've got to think, try and imagine to yourself what it's like for him now. He's getting up towards 200 and 55, 260 kilometers as he flicks his knee out, changes down two gears and sticks it into the sweeper underneath the Dunlop Bridge. And McGee goes after him doing very much the same thing. Two thirds late race distance done, eight laps completed. They're on their ninth in a 12 lapper. Third place, Donny Osborne, the V3 Honda, looking very good very early yesterday under the bridge there, really hooking the bike in and going hard. Then it's Dowson, followed by Wayne Clark, Simon Buckmaster. There's Clark, Buckmaster, Buckmaster six. Closing on him, in fact. So Buckmaster looking and to then upgrade himself. Some close company here. Horton leading a bunch. David Snape's in there. 69 is Steve Watts, back from a season in Japan. And uh, Watts doing very well there on just a 250 Yamaha. Also in there is Craig Trinder on 15. And Tony Armstrong on 82. That's the dice for seventh position. And there around the back section of the circuit as McElnay flashes across the start finish line at a reduced pace now into the 14s and now about five and a half seconds in front of Kevin McGee. And trying to ride it, he does it too. 69 is Watts. And now out after Craig Trinder on 15. Good battle, this one, for seventh place. David Horton, on the RGB Mark 7 Suzuki, about a 1981 model with some 1983 bits on it. Being closely challenged by David Slate. Out of the slipstream, goes down low on the, uh, on the fastest corner on the track, and he does it. But see whether 27 fights back as they go down now into that hard braking corner. Snape keeps the lead. Further behind, Watts is the head of the next bunch of three, with Armstrong tucked in behind him. And then I think Craig Trinder dropping to last man in the bunch of five. This is lap ten. The leader's out on lap eleven. 6.22 seconds the gap from him back to Kevin McGee and then the full length of the straight and a bit more back to Donny Osmond two of these breaking away in seventh and eighth place and it gives you a good idea of just how windy difficult it is around the back end of the circuit and that will be Snape Buckmaster. Buckmaster and Clark are very close together. And in fact, Buckmaster has now rounded up Clark to take over fifth position. And there goes Buckmaster, the yellow bike. Brought here, uh, thanks to TNT Skypack. Buckmaster, a regular Grand Prix campaigner in Europe, does very well on a very low budget. Buckmaster riding about six seconds at the moment behind Michael Dawson on a production bike. I tell you what, there's a lot of pride involved in getting up to him and getting through the production bike. McElnay comes up onto the tail of Jeffrey Sale as he enters his last lap of the Surface Paradise International Raceway. Next weekend, of course, the series moves to Oran Park in New South Wales with action-packed motorcycle racing there next Sunday, and then to Calder International in Victoria the weekend after. And uh, as we saw 
And Calo sweet pass sale with consumer D's. Jeffrey between the two legs was complaining that not only was this Suzuki, the new bike, not very fast, it was also handling uh, atrociously. So they've got a lot of work to do on this new machine of theirs. McElnay with two wins in these two heats. Looks as though he could win the $50,000 bonus for winning all six. But people said that last year to Wayne Gardner. Are you going to win the 50? He said anything can happen and don't start banking on it. And indeed, things did happen. He was beaten at Oran Park by Mal Campbell. He was beaten at Surfers by Mal Campbell again. And who knows what McGee and Osborne and others can do at the two tracks to come in the next two weeks. I, I rather think Campbell's a very, very special individual. And uh, Campbell would be a threat here on any motorcycle. And it's a great shame that he isn't here to uh, keep McElnay honest. Checkered flag comes up for Rob McElnay who wins both heats of the first round of the Swan Insurance Motorcycle Series at Surface Paradise Raceway. Kevin McGee takes second place in both rounds. So, McElnay will lead the series on 30 points from McGee, 24. Kevin McGee there, talking to the, or looking at the 1978 Swan Series winner, the first of the eight series completed. We're now on the ninth. McElnay, 2.22 seconds faster that time over the 12 laps than previously, averaging 154.8 kilometres an hour, not very far off a 100 mile an hour average, coming in again ahead of his Marlborough Yamaha teammate Kevin McGee on another YZR and Donny Osden on the 1983 V3 Honda X Team Honda Australia. A bike that in fact hasn't won an awful lot, it's won at Bathurst in both Andrew Johnson and uh, Malcolm Campbell's hands and it's uh, won some Swan Series heats but it hasn't competed in the Australian Championships but by gee that type of bike and that team has won plenty in recent times Peter Clifford yes the uh, watching there the uh, familiar for me the uh, orange and white colors of the Marlboro Yamaha we've seen what Rob has done in these two races and uh, he finished a very fine fifth in the uh, world championship just imagine how fast eddie lawson is the the uh, current title holder i mean he's he's another leap ahead of what rob can do at this moment and rob still has some work to do if he's going to be uh, winning grand prix next year McElnay ninth in the world championships in 1984 uh, sorry 85 fifth this year and took fourth place on Four different occasions crashed out of two races at monza in the last round at san marino monza was unfortunate he thought he was on the final lap sat up as he went across the finishing line lost the placing got stuck into it again and then got tossed off on what he, he'd been told by his pit crew wrongly well uh, actually or the start line officials. yes it was the start line officials it was it was in such a close battle with christian sauron and mike baldwin that he was slip steaming in past them past the pits and couldn't read his own pit signals because he was right up the tail of the other two and was having to read the official uh, lap scoring board and it was the official lap scoring board that was a lap out of sync and uh, it was thanks to them that he made the mistake he said that really knocked his confidence actually he had to think about things and say well i, I don't want to become a, a perennial crasher i want a job next year which he's got he was signed re-signed for Marlborough Yamaha very early on and uh, he said I had to settle down regain my confidence and decide what I had to do for the next few races both to build up the confidence but to support Eddie Lawson yes I mean it's racing at that level in the Grand Prix is very much a matter of confidence